Welcome to HealthCast, the heartbeat of health IT. I'm Alexander Bolova, production lead at GovCIO Media and Research. With me today is staff writer researcher, Jordan McDonald. Hi, Jordan. Hi, Alex. You had the opportunity to chat with Indra Sandal, Chief of Innovation at VHA, and Dr. David Rue, Global Chief Medical Officer and VP of Healthcare for Microsoft. How'd it go? It went really well. Both of them had really good insights on a really interesting and new initiative the VA, well, the VHA is doing down in Tampa. It's a VHA hackathon, and it happened in May. Dr. Sandal and Dr. Rue told me about the new initiative and how they're bringing together people from inside and outside government to work towards bettering veterans' health care through a really interesting initiative called a hackathon. Basically, they're getting like some of the brightest minds they can find to sit down for a couple of days, work together, collaborate, and then come up with possible solutions to veteran problems like connecting them to better uh, health care sooner, preventing veteran suicide, or um, just even helping with hiring within the VA. This initiative um, is really interesting because the winners of it move on to possibly getting their idea tested and scaled out and then becoming fully fledged and developed and released at scale within the VA. Yeah, it sounds like a really great opportunity to accelerate innovation when I know typically it can be a little difficult to adopt new technologies in the federal government. And this really provides a platform to get new ideas incorporated pretty quickly. Well, I know that y'all had a terrific chat, so let's not keep our audience waiting. Let's take a listen to your conversation. Hi, welcome to GovCast. I'm Jordan McDonald, staff writer with GovCIO Media and Research. Today, I'm joined by Dr. Indra Sandal, Chief of Innovation at the Tampa VA Medical Center, and Dr. David Room, Global Chief Medical Officer for Microsoft. Hello, and welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Jordan, for having us in your podcast. Yes, thank you, Jordan. We're excited to be here. Dr. Sandal, I uh, wanted to start because you've got some exciting news coming out of the VHA with this recent hackathon. Could you tell me more about the hackathon in Tampa and I guess what it is? Yeah, Jordan, thank you so much for asking that question. And uh, we are very, very excited uh, uh, that we are going to share some of the highlights of the Veteran Health uh, MIT Hacking Medicine 2024 uh, on your podcast. Uh, but before we'll go in the detail of this, what is this hackathon is, uh, because also wanted to make sure that the audience is aware of that what hackathon means, uh, which most of the audience sometimes um, doesn't have any clue. Uh, but I will, I will prefer to go a little bit, a um, little bit first that how this all started. Um, what what came to my mind to do this type of a uh, event in our in, in in our VA or or in Tampa. So um, uh, I want to go, go back and then say that, let's start that why I'm here and why I'm talking about the veteran health, uh, MIT Hacking Medicine. Uh, MIT Hacking Medicine does a uh, hackathon, uh, which is a two day event uh, where uh, people from a different uh, teams and diversity, uh, they come together and uh, sit together for 72 hours uh, to work on the challenges so that by the end of two days, uh, they can come up with the solution. So that is the basic thing, which is a hackathon means. Uh, so MIT Hacking Medicine does the hackathons, uh, which are called as a grand hack uh, every year in their um, campus in Boston, Cambridge. Uh, I'm a part of that MIT Hacking Medicine team from almost last five or six years. Uh, in the capacity of a participant, mentor, or judge. So last year, when I joined Tampa VA as a chief of innovation in January, uh, I took some of my um, Tampa VA employees also with me uh, to join the Grand Hack um, in, in um, Boston in April 2023. And uh, when we came back, uh, we came back with three prizes. So we won three prizes from out of nine prizes in that hacking medicine. So I came back and was very excited when we debrief uh, to uh, a to lot of the VA people. And then uh, I showed my interest that can we do something like this to be organized and hosted by the VA? 
And people were like, really? Uh, do you really mean this? And I was like, yeah, I do. And they were like, you do understand that to do the things like this, it takes several years uh, to do it in the government. And I was like, okay, that sounds good. Uh, but with the full support uh, from the leadership of Tampa VA and the Vision 8, which is our network from Florida, I took this challenge and worked on that from last one year. And exactly after one year and one month, on May 17, in Tampa, um, Florida, uh, we launched uh, this Veterans Health MIT Hacking Madison, which is the first of its kind to be hosted and organized first time by any VA hospital in the history of VA in collaboration with MIT Hacking Medicine, Microsoft, and VHA Innovation Ecosystem, and University of South Florida giving us the space uh, to do it in their downtown School of Medicine uh, lo uh, location. So, uh, and we did it. So now the question is, how all this happened. And we'll talk a little bit more in your, in your podcast, uh, but to give the audience that who I am and uh, uh, how I work and how I made this happen with the team and with the collaboration came when I was growing up in India. I did grow up in India and being raised by a family that served in the military. My dad served 35 years in Indian Air Force. And after I immigrated to the US, uh, this passion to serve the veterans uh, led me to the VA innovation ecosystem and uh, started working on the challenges that veterans face in their access to care. Three years ago on the same podcast, I, I did came and we started our new program, which was the VHA Uber Health Connect Initiative to help reduce missed appointments, improve the veteran experience and achieve the cost saving for VA facilities. Over the past three years, our program has brought 50,000 veterans to medical appointments and saved the VA $200 million in travel cost. And on my first, exactly 15 days before I started this another innovation of hackathon, this program became available all across the VA hospital with the name of Beneficiary Travel Rideshare Services which is going to be run by the Veteran Transportation Program Office. So that's the story behind it, that if you have to do something, I think so go for it, take the challenge and go all the way and make it happen. And I will stop here before we'll go more in detail about the purpose and goal. I will let uh, David to chime in and then give his introduction from where he is. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Andrea. You know, just a little background on myself. I'm a physician a technologist, a health services researcher. I'm also a VA, former VA physician, uh, working from the VA Greater Los Angeles Healthcare System, Vision 22. And, you know, I, I have a, a, a longstanding history of, of really trying to understand how technology can be used to improve health outcomes, improving access to care, quality of care, patient safety. And having worked in the VA, I know that there's tremendous opportunity to be uh, able to apply some of these newer technologies and to have individuals within the system that are extraordinarily talented, brilliant, uh, and innovative in thinking about ways that we can solve these problems together. That's what excites me about the hackathon. I, I felt like the hackathon uh, is, is this one of the great opportunities for us to be able to solve problems together, uh, but have uh, sort of a very focused way to do it and then have the support from organizations uh, to be able to then take that output and hopefully uh, build off of that. Absolutely. And so, Dr. Sandel, understanding that this hackathon is the first of its kind for the VA um, anywhere, let alone at the uh, Tampa facility, could you sort of tell me what the objectives were? What were you hoping to accomplish? Um, what challenges were you looking to tackle? through this hackathon specifically. Yeah, and to also to a little bit clarify here, uh, when I say first of its kind, because um, VA did collaborate, VHA Innovation Ecosystem did the collaboration with the MIT Hacking Medicine earlier, where the VA employees participated in the hackathon. 
uh, but to organize and hosted by the VA hospital itself, that's one of its kind. That is the first time it is happening. Although we do have a collaboration with the Hacking Madison from last six years, but we were always participating in them, but we were not able to organize ourselves. So uh, coming back to the goal and the purpose of this hackathon, um, main purpose was public-private collaboration. Uh, that's a very vague and a huge word, which has several meanings and how you can use that specific word in the innovation space. For us to have the specific goal around the public-private collaboration, the vision was that by using the public-private collaboration, can we create an ecosystem for people, technology, and community stakeholders so that we can deliver transformative healthcare innovation for veterans? And when I say that the community stakeholders and technology and people, because we are looking for the uh, public-private collaboration from all the three sides. And if we do the innovations by using these type of a collaboration, those collaborations often benefit the entire healthcare system. And the hackathon like this help identify and share the groundbreaking advancements making them more widely accessible. So we were doing it for the veterans, but we were including the community so that they can be a part of the solution, not only the solution for the veterans, but also for the whole healthcare organization. To give you the context of that, that how this hackathon, the participants who were, uh, who participated in this hackathon, generally called as a hackers, one of the feedback which we got, and I will read that testimonial, which literally resonate with the public-private collaboration. Uh, quote, unquote, it, uh, it was an experience that I am so thankful to have the opportunity to attend. I learned so much and got to collaborate with people that I would not have had the opportunity to work with. So that's what, when you talk about the collaboration, it's not what we are trying to do, but what we are going to take it out from here. So uh, that, that was the main goal of the hackathon. Also, the another um, ultimate goal of this hackathon was also that we are not doing one-time event for the fun, that let's bring all the participants together, let them create something new. But what we are trying to do for the sustainability point of view to have a huge impact later on from this event. To give you a, I think so, it is a spoiler, but we'll talk a little bit later, that this will be a series of three hackathons. That's why it is called as 2024. It will be a series of three hackathons followed by the makeathon after each hackathon. So we'll talk a little bit more on that, um, that how it's going to work. What were the priorities where we were focusing on to create a solution? or what were the challenges, uh, that was based on the three critical VA priorities. Uh, connecting veterans to the soonest and the best care, which is basically improving the access to care. Other one is preventing veteran suicide. And the third one was hiring faster and more competitively. So uh, that was the three target um, priorities which we focused on. To give you an idea that how we did it and how it looked like so that audience will know that how we tackle these three challenges and uh, how the participants got mentored by the subject matter experts and also how they were judged so that they end up winning the whole hackathon and moving forward for the makeathon. So uh, the main reason of the hackathons are designed to bring the smart people together, I'm very sure, <laughs> and let them collide with them, with each other, so that uh, they can come up with some solution which they cannot by sitting at home. So that is the main target for the overall hackathon. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we provided the three challenges uh, to all these participants. There were 217 participants, which I say as a hackers, uh, who were selected and were assigned to one of these three tracks, 
before May 17th. When they came on May 17th, they brought their challenges with them and the self-formed teams were worked around these problems. And with the tools and arrays from the Microsoft and the diverse experience of our veterans, all the participants started understanding the value of the team and the right resources. They worked on their challenges in 40 teams. So around 40 teams were formed from 217 participants. They worked on Friday from Friday night to Sunday morning in their teams with the expertise and mentoring from the subject matter experts, which are around 50 mentors who were mentoring them. And on Sunday, May 19th, nine hackathon winner teams were selected by expert judges. So in two and a half days, they started with the idea with the strangers, which they never met, and came together. And after two and a half days, 72 hours, they converted the idea into concept. And in the form of a presentation, they pitched that to the judges. And judges chose nine winner teams from the hackathon. And um, uh, moving forward, starting this summer, we will take these winners to the next level with the Makeathon, where we are going to provide the additional resources to them, along with the infrastructure support and team support from Microsoft to work on their concept to make it a prototype and pilot in the VA. I know I brought a lot of the details here, but I really wanted audience to understand that how this whole event happened in 72 hours and where we are, which was not possible without the 217 participants, without 45 mentors, around 30 judges, and overall 415 attendees in this hackathon. That's uh, truly incredible, Dr. Sandal. Could you sort of tell me the background of some of these participants? Um, what skills are they bringing to a hackathon like this? And, you know, the winners in particular, what sort of solutions do they come up with that you're um, hoping to move on toward the larger megathon in the future? Yeah, and I think so. Uh, before I will answer that question, I will, I will add some of the winners also here and also the skill set, what we were talking about. Uh, but uh, I will uh, let also David to, to chime in here because when I mentioned that the Microsoft uh, brought their team of 25 people uh, on, on site, uh, which was a very unique part of this, this uh, hackathon, uh, where they brought their team together uh, to provide the training uh, how to use these AI tools to, to the participant. Uh, that was a big, big aha moment for so many participants um, who were um, hacking and working on this hackathon. David, do you want to add something? And I can bring more solutions which were created by these, uh, these participants or by the winner teams. Yeah, one of the things that's important to recognize is that uh, the people that participated in this were clinicians, they're researchers, they're uh, folks that are passionate about a certain initiative, they're not necessarily computer programmers or data scientists. And so what we found was that the use of a lot of these technologies, which are very consumer friendly, allow them to be able to make significant strides and advancements. Uh, so within artificial intelligence, specifically in generative AI, we now have a natural language interface that allows individuals to communicate directly with the reasoning engine to be able to identify and pull information, to be able to summarize it, to be able to present it in the right format. This is a very powerful tool that now has been democratized and allows us to be able to have any individual of any skill set to be able to do this. Uh, when we talk about you know, some of the low code, no code type of applications that allow us to be able to very easily create dashboards and summarize data in ways that are very understandable, we now have an ability to be able to do so much more. And so these are the types of tools and technologies that are so important for us to be able to have successful hackathons, because with that, you can allow anyone 
irrespective of their technology background and expertise to be able to take participate this and be an active contributor. And, and to add there more a uh, little bit, um, again, I will quote uh, one of the uh, participant uh, on this AI technology, what uh, David mentioned, uh, and I will quote there, uh, realizing I did not need a tech or IT background to contribute new innovative ideas, as well as help improve and re-energize work processes or programs for the VA to support our courageous veteran population was so unique. So those are the feedback which we are getting from the uh, from the from the participant, and also to give you a little bit of an idea, Jordan, ninety eight percent of these participants never attended the hackathon. So ninety eight percent of the participants, they, it was their first time attending the hackathon. Uh, they didn't know even that what hackathon means. Um, and then the other feedback was that I did not know what a hackathon was. It was an experience that I'm so thankful. So it's it's basically um, uh, the people who were there, they didn't even know that, that what is this all about. Um, and uh, coming back to your question that what were the skill set, David touched really well there. Uh, and I will give one example to you uh, that the skill set of the people there were um, not only the clinician, as he mentioned, the people from business school, from uh, engineers, uh, from the startups, uh, from the non-clinician, and uh, never ever in the clinical setting, those type of the skill set we have. So to give you some example of our winning teams, uh, one was from the Prevent Veterans Society. Uh, the team name was um, Vite, V-I-T-A-E, Vitae or Vite. Uh, and uh, that team work uh, uh, to transform the static safety plan into dynamic veteran-centric decision points um, using the humanized conversations. Uh, in that, to give you an idea, well, who was the winning team? Who were the team members? Innovation specialist from Orlando VA, senior management consultant from Washington, D.C., USF, which is the University of South Florida student, from Tampa, clinical psychologist from the Greater Los Angeles VA, psychologist and the informatician from Boston, and the healthcare consultant from Denver. So you got such a wide spectrum of the team members who work together. Uh, the other one uh, for the winning team, to give you an example, uh, that is from the higher, faster, and more competitively, what they did, uh, they created um, using the journal AI and the um, uh, NPNLP, um, which is a language, to rate and rank the resume, reducing bias and improving consistency. Uh, and win winning team was data scientist from Palo Alto VA, executive mm -hmm. director from North Florida Foundation for Research and Education, management consultant from the Chicago Startup, Health system specialist from Lexington VA, postdoctoral research fellow from the College of Public Health, and an entrepreneur and the startup from the Washington DC. So these type of the uh, people who were participated uh, in this hackathon, and these are the winning team. How it looks like? I hope that that answer your little bit of a diversity question here. Yeah, absolutely. I'm curious because you know. You're bringing in all these people of so many different skill sets, but also partnering or collaborating with industry. Uh, you mentioned the public-private collaborations and how important they are. And I guess, could you sort of help me understand why the, those collaborations are so significant to begin with? What is it about working with industry and academia, because, um, you know, MIT is also involved here, too, that helps initiatives like this hackathon develop? Yeah, that's that's such a good question. And I think so. Um, I will let David also to chime in in this, uh, because being from the Microsoft, uh, they do have collaboration not only with the VA, and this is not the first time they are doing the collaboration with the VA. Uh, they do have a long standing collaboration with the VA. Uh, so I will let him also to talk uh, more about the importance of these type of a uh, collaboration um, uh, with the academy and also with the federal government. Um, for for me, um, Jordan, uh, like I mentioned earlier, that um, 
the key for any success, uh, key to success for any innovation or any new thing, uh, which we want to bring in any system, uh, not only in the healthcare system, uh, we do need a perspective from a, a different industries. Um, because the people who are in the government, in the academia, and in the industry, uh, they have different mindset. They have different skill set. Uh, so when you bring these people um, all together, and then um, um, and you don't have that expertise because uh, each of the expertise in these area academia um, collaborators have different expertise. Um, in in, in uh, federal government, we have people with a different subject matter expert. Same thing in the industry, you have a different experts. Um, so when you bring all these people together um, and let them think together for a common challenge, then the solution which comes out is mind boggling. And I'm using that word because this is how it happened when I started my VHA Uber Health Connect initiative. That was the first public private collaboration which I started with the Uber Health. Getting the program office, Uber Health, and all the VA hospital was so great that it came to the point where we impacted the lives of our veterans in a large amount. And um, I, I was in several podcasts regarding that partnership and people do mention what was the secret sauce. And I'm very sure that's where you are heading that what is there which makes these collaborations so important and how, how you think of doing that. Uh, for me, I think so only one thing which even the, for the audience also, if they are looking for these type of a collaboration to make a, a tremendous change um, or the impact on their a patient population or wherever they are working. One thing is very important um, that um, you have to unite these team around a common goal. So everybody, because as you know that the different stakeholders are so diverse, they, they cannot speak each other language. So it's very, very essential that if we are going to build a strong sense of community with all these collaborators, it is essential that we should find a common goal. And if we have a common goal, I can tell you that even if the people are from different perspectives, when they start working on the common goal with their subject matter expertise, the things like VHA Uber Health Connect initiative, the thing like the veteran health, MIT hacking medicine, and the results which are going to come out from these type of events will be a breakthrough in the healthcare system. That, that is what the collaboration means to me. And I will let David to chime in uh, to talk a little bit more on the collaboration. And I can give you the examples of all the collaborators uh, who were the part of this, not only the Microsoft and the MIT Hacking Medicine, but several others, which I really want to um, add their name. But I will let David to chime in uh, to talk a little bit uh, about Microsoft partnerships with the VA in the past and also in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Dr. Rue, I would love to get your perspective being on the other side of it, how working as an industry partner with government, the initiatives that a company like Microsoft is able to find and then work with, and um, some of the lessons you've learned that other industry partners might find useful when they're looking to uh, work and collaborate with the government. Yeah, there are a few areas where industry partnerships and collaborations are very helpful. And when you think about just the setup of the hackathon and these type of initiatives where you're bringing a large number of people together, uh, it has to be done in an environment which is secure. Uh, you have to assign user permissions. You have to be able to understand how you can take this information and the uh, results and be able to move this from, uh, I'll call it sandboxes and playgrounds to production. And so all of that discussion around how you set up infrastructure and, and uh, the setup is something where industry partners can help. And then when you get to the actual applications themselves, understanding uh, what can be used and how it can be used. 
Uh, a lot of this is information that only a few people typically know. They may not have been exposed to these tools, but you know, some basic training and, and ex education on uh, uh, what the tools are and really how an uh, individual that has had no coding or no data science background can utilize this. This, this is something that uh, is also very important uh, so that the people can get exposure to it. And maybe the third area, which may be the most important, is uh, in the process of having industry partners uh, come in and describe how the tools are used, they can also share how other organizations are trying to solve the same type of problems. This ability for us to be able to share best practices and s describe, well, this is how other organizations have approached it. It may be a good strategy. Uh, here are some suggestions in terms of how we would recommend that you put the prompts together uh, so that we could have a better, more reliable result. And these type of insights on how to best optimize and utilize the technology make the individuals far more effective and productive. And so, so it's really all of those things, the infrastructure, the education and training, and then the best practices that allow these collaborations to be very fruitful. Absolutely. And so, Dr. Sandal, you mentioned earlier that I guess the idea after the hackathon is to eventually bring together a bunch of the winners into a megathon. Could you give us a little more details about that and um, what you're hoping to do, I guess, doubly so with the results <laughs> of the hackathon? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's so uh that that will be quite unique in the VA. So that is something which we are uh, still planning, but I, I, I will talk um on that makeathon. Um and uh, before uh, maybe a little bit adding what David mentioned in the previous question, uh, and also to talk about um the collaborators, um, because you can imagine it's almost uh impossible to to do this type of event. Um, you do need infrastructure. Uh, you do need uh, people who are going to work with you uh, in the sense that um, you need a environment where you are going to uh, for the AI tools. So I want to give you a little bit of a idea on that, that how it worked out. Uh, so for the, we have the biggest collaborators here. We collaborated with the VHA Innovation Ecosystem, uh, which already do these type of events. So they were a big piece of that. Uh, MIT Hacking Madison has a unique design methodology uh, that laid the foundation for this Hacking Madison. Uh, Microsoft brought the generative AI tools to, to uh, respond to patient need and also for the collaboration. And they brought their team on, on site, uh, which was really, really helpful for the, for the participants to, uh, to get the idea that what is this all about? They never used it. They never heard these tools. Um, that was a big piece of it. Uh, but also when we bring the industry, we should also make sure that internally we are bringing the, our stakeholders who are working with the Microsoft. So the Office of Information and Technology, as you are known as the IT in the VHA, also have a, a huge environment, which we used it uh, for the hackers uh, to um, to get the data from there. So uh, Bill Maloney, who, who um, was a big stakeholder from the from the OIT, uh, worked with in a team with the Microsoft, and they provided a Azure environment uh, for the um, uh, for the participants uh, to work on the AI tools. So that was very important for us because we can bring the Microsoft, but if it's not internally integrated with our stakeholders, it's very difficult to do that. So those were the main collaborators which came together. And other than that, we had the people from the volunteer service. And you might be wondering how the volunteer service is a, a fit here, but those are the people uh, who uh, brought us um, a lot of the donations where we needed uh, for the people to come and then um, uh, showed us the regulation piece of also this event. Um, so many things which worked with the uh, CDC office also. Uh, we had um, um, for the infrastructure, as I mentioned, it was by the University of South Florida. And uh, Dr. Eric Eisenberg was the one who literally provided us that space. Uh, the dean of the medical school provided that infrastructure where we can uh, we can be there. 
like um, David mentioned, you need a virtual space where the hackers will be working because this is all about the AI. So uh, then we got uh, Mark McDonald from the Microsoft with his team uh, who came on site to work on it. Um, I mentioned about the Office of Information Technology. So those were the other people who also participated in that. We had the sponsors uh, who also donated for this event uh, from the academia like the Kellogg Northwestern School uh, in Chicago, uh, University of South Florida, uh, some of the uh, veteran um, uh, owned service uh, organization, uh, the veteran service organization, VSOs, uh, some of the other companies who are the part of the sponsorship. So those all came together. We are from the academia, industry, government, non-government agency to make it happen. Uh, it was not only the collaboration of MIT, Hacking Madison and Microsoft, but a lot of other stakeholders which came together to create this, not only the infrastructure physically, but also the virtual space uh, to make this happen. So that is from the collaboration point of view. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The other question I wanted to ask was, you know, understanding that you've picked nine winners from this hackathon and you still have two more on the way. How do you intend to, I guess, double and scale, I guess, the results of this with the megathon that you're eventually planning to bring all these winners together? Yeah, that's very interesting. And it is Makeathon. So it's not Megathon, it's Makeathon. Oh, like when make, you make the stuff. Like. <laughs> Megathon. Wow. Okay. <laughs> you, what you uh, uh, conceptualize in the hackathon, you are going to make that now and convert that concept into a into a project or a program or the service. So that's why it is called as a Megathon. But uh, I'm glad that you, you said Megathon so that I can at least explain what Megathon is. <laughs> So Makeathon is uh, something what we are planning. Uh, it's not only for the winning team. So we are going to open the application uh, for the Makeathon uh, this summer, uh, where we want all the teams uh, to apply for that. And in that, there will be some uh, more details to know about their teams, uh, what they are planning to do, uh, what type of a business case they are working on. And based on that, um, we are going to uh, choose uh, 10 applications uh, out of that application uh, of Makeathon. And uh, those 10 projects will go uh, through the um, mentorship uh, and also through the bootcamp uh, with the help of the team support from the MIT, MIT Hacking Medicine, so that they can uh, create their uh, business case and uh, tell us a little bit more what they wanted to do and they create more uh, structured uh, business case with the implementation plan. Uh, that is, we are planning to do in a two boot camps in the coming months. And after that, they are going to pitch their final business case to the investors. Basically, uh, the VA um, will be the investor, and not only Tempa VA, but uh, all the program office and all the VA hospitals uh, who participated in this event will be invited. And um, we are going to choose uh, the three top uh, winners uh, of the projects, the three top projects, uh, sometime in October or November of this year. And we are going to invest uh, in those three projects so that we can um, help them to create the prototype or the product which they are working on in a fastest way uh, with the team support and mentoring, um, not only from Microsoft, but also from the Hacking Madison and a lot of other mentors which we have in our network. Uh, so before the launch of the next hackathon in May 2025, we have these projects uh, have their product uh, ready to pilot uh, in one of the VA sites or more than one VA sites. So we are hoping uh, that the three projects which will move forward uh, to create the product uh, is going to present in our opening session of Hackathon. This is all the vision what we have at this time. Uh, it may change also, uh, but that's how we are working on and that will be the full investment. And if that happens, Jordan, that is again a dream. Uh, if that happens, uh, that will be the fastest uh, way that we might have created any uh, product starting from the hackathon uh, till the next hackathon. So it might be the fastest way to create by six to eight months 
uh, but uh, it cannot be possible without those collaboration, without bringing all those collaborators back to the game and then get their buy-in and let them all work with us uh, to create something new, not only for the veterans, uh, but also for the healthcare organization overall. Absolutely. You know, thinking about the winners and the eventual makeathon, I'm also looking at the larger, I suppose, push within the VHA to do like tech sprints um, and find new ways and exciting ways, whether it's a hackathon or tech sprints to embrace emerging technologies. And after the success of the hackathon that we've just had last month, I want to ask what sort of lessons are you hoping to bring to the VA at large and maybe even the rest of government about ways to embrace new technologies? And on the flip side of that too, you know, from an industry perspective as well, what sort of lessons are you looking to take to industry as well, you know, to say, here's how you can work with government. Here's a new and exciting way to bring your capabilities to the government in ways that, you know, haven't been embraced or um, thought of yet. Yeah, that's that's a very good question. I will let David also to, to add here. So the first thing, um, Jordan, uh, when we uh, thought of doing it one year ago, these type of the event take five years to happen. Uh, we were on a very fast track uh, and we wanted to do it uh, because, and as you know, in the government, things doesn't happen that fast. Uh, that's why there were, I cannot even count the name of the team members, uh, especially uh, uh, the person who worked with me and he was my partner in doing all these things from the MOU to the CRADA to the agreements and working with the IT, Michael Catania from, from the uh, Los Angeles VA. Um, he worked uh, in and out with me. He was my right hand for doing all these things, along with so many other people. Uh, we are creating a complete report uh, of this hackathon. Like you said, that we really want to um, learn the lessons and also improve those lessons uh, for the next year hackathon, but also, as you said, uh, for the future hackathons also. So that's why when, when we thought of doing this thing, I thought that we should not do only one year because in one year, what you will learn, whatever you learn, you cannot improve it because you don't have the second chance. And that's why we wanted to do the series of three so that what we are going to learn in this hackathon, we are going to improve for the next year. Uh, one of the things which surprised all of us, which we thought that it will be, but surprised us that how collaborative innovation uh, by a diverse pool of talent can rapidly address something that important, which is so much a urgent health need. Talking about the access to care, um, talking about uh, uh, the preventing the veteran suicide, uh, like how we can bring these people and make this happen. That was something blew our mind when, when this thing happened and when we got the success of this MIT hackathon. I can tell you when we were working on that, we were not sure how successful it will be because it was the first time we were exposing all the VA people to the AI tools for them to use the uh, de-identified data of the VA in the environment where they never used might be something might not be good, but it happened. Lessons what we learned from there is that we are going to work on that, making sure we are going to expose this accessibility of these AI uh, to the um, to the hackers and also to the participants way before, uh, considering that uh, uh, some of the trainings will be given for the pre-event making more exposure to the VA employees about the trainings, like how to use the AI tool, because they think that they are not able to do it because they don't know what is this all about. So that was one of the things which we are um, hoping to do it next year also, but also considering that when we did the AI training, that was another one which was done by the Microsoft, one of the educational service office of the Caribbean healthcare system, which is in Puerto Rico, uh, wanted to pick up this type of a training and then asked us that, can we do these type of a trainings in all the VA hospital where we can get awareness of using the artificial intelligence for the VA employees? And that was 
that was really something which we thought, which we didn't think that that is possible. So that is the one thing which we uh, learned and we, which we think that moving forward, we are going to do that. But also in the future hackathon, uh, here we brought the Tampa and I didn't mention, or maybe I mentioned that we did cover 28 states. Uh, but like you said, bringing more people in the participant from the industry, we did get 10 to 20% from the industry, but getting more diversity from the industry and creating something for the veterans, which might be very widely scalable outside in any healthcare system, might also be a good. So we did learn a lot of the stuff, but I'm thinking by the Makeathon and by one year when we'll complete the round of Hackathon with Makeathon with the final outcome of this Hackathon, we can talk a little bit more on the on the things which we are going to do for the for the next hackathon. Hopefully, we'll come to your podcast again before launching our next hackathon, and you can ask the same question. And I am going to tell you maybe long list of that. So, <laughs> so I will let David to to talk a little bit more um, what he heard from his Microsoft team. Uh, but we did get a lot of the feedback from the participants uh, who were very happy that how the Microsoft team uh, provided the tech support. Uh, again, to quote here, I have several quotes, but I'm very sure you love quotes. And that is that the Microsoft went above and beyond helping with tech and AI support for our project. And that was our favorite moment, an aha moment for us to use the Microsoft tools demo because they did do the, the demo also to, the, to all their AI tools. You know, there's so much potential with artificial intelligence and technology to help address some of the major challenges. What we uh, found uh, from this hackathon and with future events is that we, if we focus on the top priorities, in this case, improving access to care to the veterans, helping prevent veteran suicide, finding ways that we can build a competitive workforce by hiring them, there's a lot that can be done, even within just those three categories. And that's where the innovation comes about, where you have individuals that can describe many different aspects for how we can address that. And it's that ability to double click on these use cases, understand where we may be able to apply the technology that was so extraordinarily valuable from this hackathon. And we hope to participate in future ones where we can continue to take advantage of the innovation and creativity from the individuals. That, that's that's so well said, David. And uh, I know that, Jordan, we are out of time to give you only one, two minute more uh, to get your time on that, that um, we did talk about the whole hackathon, how that happened, how participants come together uh, to make it a well-round event, that uh, what else we added, like, uh, like you mentioned earlier, that the collaborators bringing the industry partner, uh, we had the opening session, which was the opening remark was given by our mayor of city of Tampa, uh, Mayor Jane Castor. So we did involve the city of Tampa also uh, as a community partner. Uh, we did bring some of the startups, uh, which did come out from the MIT Hacking Medicine. One was the Overjet uh, founder that did come there. Uh, we had some of the opening session remarks also from the veterans and also uh, who are from the from the uh, industry partners uh, like uh, Microsoft. Uh, the artificial intelligence training was another one. Uh, we did have the speaker panels because we wanted to uh, give the participants the insight from the leadership point of view. So we had one speaker panel for the public-private partnership delivering impact together, uh, where we brought the Tampa General Hospital CEO, Microsoft, MIT Hacking Madison, and a lot of the leadership from the VHA. And also to give a participant not to sit there and do hack, but also to understand what's next for them. So another speaker panel was uh, from zero to one, early stage entrepreneurship. There we brought some entrepreneurs to talk about their journey. So if anybody or any participant interested in moving forward with this, what they are thinking about how this entrepreneurship looks like. So that was another piece of it and on-site tech assistance, which is a very unique piece of this, of this hackathon. So those were the roundabout um, uh, things which we brought uh, in the hackathon uh, to help participants to understand uh, the perspective of the leadership, 
from the academia, from the government, from the non-government, from the industry. And also if they want to take as a career of this moving forward in the entrepreneurship, they can listen from some entrepreneurs. So that I wanted to add there. Absolutely. Well, I just wanted to say thank you so much, Dr. Sandal and Dr. Rue for joining us on the show. Appreciate you having you on, uh, delivering your insights and updates about uh, all things with the VHA's hackathon. It's been yeah. our pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, uh, Jordan. And I will go with one quote here. Uh, Dan Coleman, who is a general manager of Microsoft Federal uh, Civilian Arm, uh, he's a veteran himself. And uh, I will quote what he said uh, in his opening remark. If we can bring clarity to just one veteran through mental health solutions, it can mean an extra day, an extra birthday, an extra anniversary with loved ones. The impact of that is immeasurable. Uh, that was one of the track which we uh, tried to do the solution, prevent the veteran suicide. So uh, for anybody out there in the audience, if you want to make a change uh, and want to do innovation to have a huge impact on your population where you are working, don't be scared. Dream big. No idea is too small or too big to explore because the innovation is born from the idea. Thank you so much, Jordan, for having us. It's a pleasure to talk to you about the hackathon. Thank you, Jordan. That was a terrific chat with Indra Sundal and Dr. David Rue. Before we let our listeners go, are there any last highlights or takeaways that you want to leave them with? I think, you know, this hackathon is really interesting. It's really unique and new. But I also want to, I guess, put it into the broader landscape of the VA and talk about how the agency as a whole is doing things like this or tech sprints and really trying to be one of the leading organizations within government into the future of technology, whether it's the hackathon or a tech sprint, um, the development of AI, the VA is trying really hard to adopt new technology into its systems in order to provide veterans with better health care. Yeah, and it sounds like this year's hackathon was a success and there are more planned for the future. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how this program develops and grows. Well, Jordan, thank you so much. Listeners can tune in next week for a brand new podcast in our GovCIO Media and Research podcast feed. But until then, if you like what you heard, make sure you subscribe and leave a five star rating on the podcast platform of your choice. And hey, tell a friend we always appreciate growing our audience. I'm Alexander Bolova. And I'm Jordan McDonald. Thank you for listening. HealthCast, along with GovCast and CyberCast, is a production of GovCIO Media and Research. To explore our content, visit our website, govciomedia.com. Keep an eye out for new episodes every Tuesday. And if you like what you heard, leave us a review on the podcast platform of your choice. Have a topic you want us to discuss? Contact us at newsletter at govcio.com.